If you are someone who is trying to write a research paper and you're nervous about submitting it, this video is going to be awesome for you. So in this video, I'm going to talk about Penelope.ai, which essentially uses AI to check your manuscript to make sure that you're meeting the general requirements that academic journals typically look for. So this is the homepage of Penelope.ai, and all you have to do to try it out is come up here to try it. This will bring in a form where it allows you to get instant feedback on your manuscript. So all you have to do is press start. One of the things you're going to do is upload a file. It's going to ask you some questions about it. Is it a research paper? Is it a lit review? Stuff like that. And then you enter your email and hit submit. This particular part is free to use, but they do have some paid for services as well. And I don't, I'm not sure how many times you can use this system without having to pay for it. So just as a clarification. So what I did is I've already gone through this and once it checks it, it'll send you an email saying your paper is ready. And what it does is it sends you to a site that looks like this. This is my first research paper actually. So this is the version that I actually submitted to the journal. So what it does is it actually searches the document and checks it for multiple different things to make sure that you're meeting all of these different general requirements of journals. And if you're struggling with even getting to the point of submitting your manuscript, check out my scientific research paper checklist. It's basically a step-by-step -step process for how to plan, write, and submit your manuscript. But before you submit, I really suggest checking out this software because it basically has checks up here where it's telling you what you're not passing initially, and then you get full feedback down here. So up here, it says most journals ask for a list of keywords. I didn't include that. So what that tells me is I need to go check author guidelines, see if they're requiring a list of keywords. It also says, have you include a word count? It doesn't need to include your abstract or references. This journal doesn't require that, so I didn't need to do that. Should your abstract have subheadings? These are some of the things that if you didn't fully read an author's guidelines, you might have missed it. So it's nice that it's asking you to check these things so you can go back and see, was this actually required or not? Have you included a conflicts of interest section? This journal didn't require it, but I have submitted it to plenty of journals that did. A data statement section was not required. A funding section, I think that's actually included in here. Yeah. Yeah, it's in the acknowledgments. So I, it's not under specifically funding, but it was included in acknowledgments. That might have changed. This was published in 2018. So it was about five years ago at this point. Wow. And have you put figures in this file? You can see down here, there are definitely figures in the file. That's good. And it has four other things to double check. So this, what it's telling me is wrong with this paper is not really things wrong with this paper which is fine because this is my final version. But what I want to show you is the checks it actually does run that I did pass because these are game changers and this has caused me so much grief before submitting manuscripts. So it's basically saying you included an email, ORC ID, identifiers. This is now required for like most journals. So I've actually had a lot after the review process. One of the things was as an editorial review was you need to include your ORC ID. Keywords. So coming down to the abstract, so it checks that your abstract is within the word limit. To be specific, this is not specific for the journal I'm submitting it to. This is just a general one. I think when you pay for it, you can actually tell it the journal and it will check it against those guidelines. This isn't that specific, but that's fine because I can go check the guidelines for the word limit and make sure I'm meeting it, but it automatically gives me my word limit. Again, asks for subheadings. I have an introduction session. It says, have you included a method section? And the reason it's asking me this is yes, I have, but it didn't find it because in this journal, it's called experimental. So just good things to kind of know what this is gonna help with. Don't freak out when you see these things because it could just be that it's not picking it up because it's called something different in your paper. Have you included a discussion section? That's actually no. And it's because in these papers, you don't have, or for these journals, you don't have a results and a discussion section. You just have a results section that you include both your results and your discussion components. To. So interest section, we didn't include that. Data statement, that wasn't required at the time that we submitted. We have included an acknowledgement section and then my funding is part of acknowledgements. Now, figures. Guys, I have messed this up 
so many times when I go and I, we like add in a figure at the last minute and then I didn't go and check all the figures. This is beautiful, guys. So it says the five out of five figure legends are mentioned in the text. Yes, like to have something automatically check that I actually mentioned the figures because sometimes I go, okay, this figure was named one and then I put in a new figure, but I forgot to change that one place where I mentioned figure one and it's now figure two, but I changed all the places where it mentioned figure three. And so now figure two is just never mentioned. Yeah, it's it's been frustrating. So that is awesome. It has a figure legend. I've never messed that up, but good, good that it checks it. And then it checks that all cited sources appear in my reference list and all of my references are cited in my article and the reference and citation style match. Guys, this is like, like if you just use it for this one feature, it's just going to make your life so much easier. There's been so many times where I've created and like you're just, even when you're using something like Zotero, but then something doesn't get pulled in right and then... It's nice. It's very nice to have something that can check your references, can check and make sure that your figures are in it, that they're correctly being done. <laughs> and then also, if you don't, if especially if it's your first time submitting a manuscript and you don't know author's guidelines well, you don't know what you're looking for, being able to go in and just check all of these is really, really awesome. So I will leave a link to Penelope.ai in the description below if you want to check it out. You can run it on your manuscripts. Obviously, if I had probably ran the first version of this manuscript through it, it I might have gotten a lot more errors in it. But I think it's definitely worth a check if you are getting to the point where you're starting to submit your research article to a journal or even a review article to a journal. If you want to learn about using AI in other ways, I will leave a video here all about using AI to summarize. And I will leave another video here about using AI to generate research questions. If this video was helpful, please like it and subscribe to this channel to learn how to do your research more efficiently. I hope to see you in the next video.